Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today we're going to be focusing on the advanced tutorial for localization and uh, you guys voted for this one over the other option which was the um, I believe the keybind or not keybind the um, combo locks for the ownership. And uh, yeah, so we I have the workspace that I started with in the picket tutorial. So uh, if we eat the apple, it will basically say this is a this green apple is delicious. But uh, if we go and change it to a different language, so I have support for the um what language was it? I think it was Canadian French. So if we go into language and then scroll down until we get to Canadian French, uh, it should be, is it above or below? I can't remember. English, EF, somewhere in here. Uh, we'll find it. Just need to kind of scroll. I think it was more towards the top though. Um, Okay, French. This is France stuff. Uh, I'm looking for Canada. Okay, we'll go with, um, pretty sure. Just give me a second to find. Oh, there it is, right there, Canada, <laughs> right in front of me the whole time. All right, so we'll select that one, and then we'll eat the apple again, and then you can see basically the um, that's from the original message that we had. So I'm just going to hit uh, F3 and then D to clear it. So when we open up the chat, it won't be there. And then I'll eat it again. And as you can see, it's in Canadian French. So that's basically what you can do for translation. We've basically used a uh, procedure with the localization key. I'll get into that when we actually get into the M creator part. So you basically um, convert it into a uh, actual visible part that we can use in our script. Now, um, there isn't actually a way to translate it from one word to another, and it's probably best not to use Google Translate because it's quite inaccurate when it comes down to translating things properly. Like the context can be right sometimes, but there's like for French, uh, there's a lot of different variations of how it can be said and uh, converting it from English is like probably the worst thing that you can do when it comes down to Google Translate. So um, yeah. But on the other hand, if you you are a French speaker, then you can actually pretty much translate it to pretty much any other language in French. So if it's like uh, like France French, it won't be really similar to the Canadian French. Maybe a few minor differences, but pretty much the same thing. All right, so let's go into AmpCreator and I'll show you the basics of the keys. I'll explain how the keys work and then we will um, get into the procedure part of things. So if you go to the tab on the left, there is a few different things. You have your mod elements, resources, uh, variables, and then down here you have one called localization. If you click on that, uh, you can see that we have uh, two languages. By default, you only have the English uh, US. This is the default uh, language for the game. So um, all your element things are going to be showing up in here. For example, um, the one that we have for our item, is, uh, the item name is called Green Apple, and that basically shows up in here as well. So if we go to our Green Apple, and then we go and click on our properties. This will automatically fill out as a key in your localization. So that's where this basically comes in right here. Uh, pardon me, this one right here. And that's basically item dot, uh, basically the localization keys. So this is the namespace of the mod. And then the dot, and then the type of um, name for the actual item. Now we're on the French version. I'll explain how to add more different types of languages in just a second. But um, 
basically what this does is this is the generated one from your green apple and but you can also add your own customer ones like I did right up here which is basically the MSG stands for message and then dot green apple you can basically put anything that you want in this particular name for the actual thing and then your translation would be going in this particular box here uh, the other thing is um, if you want to add a new language you can click on the green plus icon right where the languages are and you can select it from this list there's a ton of them that you can actually choose from um, again, if you have someone that you can actually uh, get translations from, obviously that would be a lot easier than um, translating it yourself. But um, if you already speak like a language that is commonly used, like English or something like that, then you can start translating it into all the other different versions and stuff like that. It won't be too much different than the other ones. But if you're converting it from like English to French or French to English, then it's going to be a pretty big gap uh, for understanding and some words might be a little bit off and not similar to the other ones. So that's where having other people help translate will come in really handy. Uh, using uh, software like Google Translate or other uh, translation software can be very um, inaccurate. So it's best to have someone to actually help translate it for you. But uh, that's basically what you would do. If you have someone that can translate into something like uh, Spanish or something like that, then you can add Spanish to your mod. The other option is to add or remove keys. Now these ones up here are basically the add key, uh, add localization entity, that's what it's called. But these are basically the keys down here. If uh, we create this, uh, then we're basically giving it the name on this side. So if we wanted to create one that says um, MSG, um, our name, so our namespace. And then we would basically go dot again and then something like um, hello. And then we're going to create enter and then this should come up on across all your different um, languages that you have installed. So these ones right here both have the new uh, msg dot namespace dot hello. So you basically fill out this as your custom one. So I'm just going to say hello. And then you would want to basically add translation to this. Now, if you don't have a translation yet for it, it's best just to use the English version. And then you can kind of translate it later when you actually have time or have someone to help you. Um, now, generally, you don't want to add translations mixed with English and stuff like that. It can get a little bit hard for people to understand, but you can still do it. It's possible. And if you want to remove it, then you just select it, the one that you want to remove, and then you hit the remove button. So that's basically how that works. Now the translation key will be used in your procedures. So if you want a very specific one, then you will want to grab that and basically put it into a procedure that you can um, run the key from. So for example, um, if you want to I'll cover that in just a little bit. Uh, the other two options uh, is export uh, current language to CSV. Now this is a specific document type. Uh, you can actually open it up with Google Docs and I think Microsoft Word or um, Excel or something like that as well. And um, basically it just provides an easier way for your translators to help translate it and then what you want to do like I'll cover this in just a second but um, it needs to be under the UTF I think 8 if I remember correctly or it's going to have a whole bunch of weird characters I'll try to show you how it basically does that in just a second um, and the other one is to import so if you have a uh, already translated CSV uh, language uh, file that's been translated, you can import it through here and you just select the um, particular language that it's for and then you basically import it. Now, depending on what language you're on, will vary the translations for that particular language. So if we select the French version 
and then click export it'll be specifically for this french version if we click on the english one and then export then it'll be specifically for the english one so again if you want to import it for that particular language then you click on the language that you want it for and then you click import and if you want it for the french version you click on the french one and then you click on the import now that goes for any different language that you have on here just make sure that it's under the right one uh, you can also use this method to basically clone all the ones that you have and then update the existing one so if you have multiple french versions then you could basically take this language and then basically copy it over to the other existing french ones by exporting and then importing again <laughs> Now, by default, the uh, language format or um, encoding is UTF-8. I think that's what it is. I'm going to double check in Notepad just to make sure. And that's for something else that I'm working on. Okay, so if we create a new one, encoding, add UTF-8. Yeah, so it needs to be under the UTF-8 format right here. Uh, now, if you get a file received by somebody uh, that is not in UTF format, then you're going to get a whole bunch of weird characters, uh, especially ones with um, uh, special special characters like the little asterisks and stuff above the E's and I's and stuff like that. And now, what you can do to fix that is you can basically import it into Notepad or if you have another program that supports encoding then you can basically go into here and if it's like on ansi then what you can do is you can basically convert it to utf-8 now i know this is a specific feature for notepad plus plus but uh, it is possible to find some sort of converter for changing the encoding uh, notepad is probably the really cheapest way that you can actually do that so um i'll do example just in a second so if we export it and we're expect exporting the French version so we would basically just save it to our desktop we'll just do FR for French and save and then we can basically import it into uh, our workspace so we can open it up with our desktop and it should be right here and this is basically what the file will look like. You don't uh, delete this translation part right here. Everything below is going to be your translation. So basically this is the key for it, which is right here. And then there's a comma that spaces it out. And then there is the English and French version. I think it's the English version is at the end. And then the language for translation is between the two. So, uh, for example, if we look at this one right here, this is the key right up to here. This is the French translation up to here. And then we have the English translation right here. So, uh, if we want to check the encoding, then you can see that it's under UTF-8. It needs to be under that format. If we change it to um, ANSI, and we'll convert it and then check, and that's what it will be. So, if we save this, uh, we'll save it as our French and then we'll save it as French 2 and then I'll show you just quickly what it will look like when we import it so again if we want to import click on that go to our French 2 one I think that is not sure where it is um, where did I save it to Oh, that's why it's not the um, proper format. Okay, so we will save it as, um, we'll delete that. And we'll open up this again. Oh. Okay, we'll import the other one again, and then we'll do that again. So uh, open, and then we'll select the French version. And then we'll change the encoding. Now, again, it needs to be under UTF. I'm just doing this as an example. And uh, depending on the language, see, okay, I don't think it's actually in this one. So we might need to change the file format when we save it. So uh, CSV dot CSV and, okay, 
okay, it might not support for exporting from this particular one. But if um, you do have the language, then uh, for example, if it's in the and um, the other one, what it's going to do is it's going to come up with um, a bunch of different miss missing characters for the ones that are with the parts that are with the different characters other than the English characters. And that's basically needs to be under the UTF-8 format. So you can basically convert it using um, the Notepad++, but again, I can't demonstrate that properly. <laughs> So let's move on to the um, actual procedures. So we're going to create a new procedure uh, when the player right clicks with the, the apple. And then we can basically create a translation based on that. So we're just going to basically go and go down to text. And there is one right down here where it says uh, get localization text for key and then the translation dot key dot name so we're going to grab that and then what we're going to do is we're going to basically get something that supports text so we can do that by pretty much any means we can actually go and grab a player procedure scroll down grab a message place that down here now depending on how you want to set it up you might be able to uh, change it a little bit if you wanted to put some text before it um, again you would probably want it in a different key but you could basically add two different keys like this and then have two different keys play uh, for the name or you could just have that single one uh, for the translation now this part right here is going to be your key name which is located here so again you can grab either one of them but it needs to be on this side so if we grab this and then we'll grab the key name for the actual item and then we'll go over here and then we'll paste that in and now what this is going to do is it's going to basically say green apple when we basically uh, right click on the item I think uh, right click in air so that's basically what we're adding and then what we're going to do is just save that and save that and go back into game so I'll quickly go back in game and then I'll cut back in All right, so we're back in game and I'm just gonna right click on it and you can see that it basically says green apple. If we actually eat it, it's going to basically print out our actual, um, dis our uh, translation for this is, this green apple is delicious. So if we go over to our French translation and uh, we'll click on this and then we'll have to find the Canadian one again. It actually changed it back to um, English. When I'm testing, so I'll have to change this up, and then I think we could just do that. I don't actually speak French. I had to get a translation from Gold or Ion for this tutorial. So, all right, so we should have a clean uh, chat box. Yes, we do. So if we right-click on it, you can see that it says the green apple in French, and that's the same as the green apple text right here. And then we eat it. And then we have the green apple translation there. So that's all there is to it. It's really straightforward stuff. Uh, once you get the hang of it, um, it's a lot easier to work with. Again, you can use Google Docs to basically um, use for translation and stuff like that. And I think uh, Microsoft Excel or whatever is, supports it as well. So if you have the paid version of that, then you can actually uh, use that for translating and importing your CSV uh, uh, files and basically translating it there. But if you don't, then you have Google Docs as well, and that's uh, a free version for a um, for people that don't have the paid version of Excel. So hopefully uh, this tutorial will help you translate your mods, and um, I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Peace out.